So in some ways, our United Youth hasn't changed from 10, 15, 20 years ago. It's still about passionate young people, raw, hungry, doing ridiculously silly things on occasions and, and loving God and loving Jesus and loving the church in the process. It's more than a youth group, it's, it's become a youth movement. There's no like um, set way of doing it, it's something funny is always kind of happening. The message doesn't change but the methods do. Well, I pray that the passion and the commitment and the raw hunger for God hasn't changed. For most people, like I think, United is new for them, and um, but for our church, our youth ministry is as old as our church is. We started Hillsong Church in 1983. I guess I always wanted the type of church that had a freshness to it, and always wanted to have lots of young people. The first youth meeting I went to was at Pastor Brian's house, and he had his guitar, and he led the worship. So knowing how to run, I was so daggy. <laughs> <Ta -da! laughs> I would say the youth group was basic. I mean, we had a young Bible college student called Darko Koljak, who had a Croatian background, and he came down from the Blue Mountains to Sydney, it's an hour, hour and a half's drive, every, uh, every week to lead this little youth group. He was up there preaching about young people going for God, and. In my heart I thought, oh, I want to be one of those young people, but I didn't know if God could ever use me. He said that we were a Jesus army, all 10 or 15 of us, and we believed him. But he was full of vision and very keen to sort of work in and make the youth a big part of the church. So. Well, although everything was a lot smaller and really a lot more basic, there was definitely an incredibly high level of passion and excitement and enthusiasm for God and what he wanted to do. Then when our youth pastor moved on, I remember Brian saying for months we've got to pray for our new youth pastor and I was like, yeah, we've so got to pray for our new youth pastor. I, I wasn't the kind of person who wanted to be the leader. I was happy to support the leader but knew clearly that that's what God wanted me to do and take it to the next stage. In the early days under Darko, it really started to grow and form and then Donna brought this amazing shape to the youth ministry. She was just an unbelievable woman who led the way in every area and always encouraged and brought out the best in us. Well, Psalm 100 verse 2 says, serve the Lord with gladness and that really is one of Pastor Brian's main values for our church and what goes on in the life of our church. And when we were getting started, you know, there wasn't a lot of resources, we didn't have a lot of things, but we had this desire to maximize whatever we had to really see God have a huge impact in the lives of young people. There was a real sense of dreaming big in those days. The atmosphere and the spirit of it was probably in a lot of ways really similar to still what it is today sitting and watch, watching Donna preach every Saturday night and, and uh, yeah, it was good times. It was about eight or nine years later and I was asked to move into another area of church life. So Phil and Lucinda taking over, by now they got married finally, was um, just natural, ready, it was all ready. But when Lucinda and I had the privilege of taking on the leadership of our youth ministry, which was about ten years ago, there were awesome things happening already and it was just Man, such a privilege to take on the responsibility. And I think all of us knew in our hearts that if we really sowed into this thing, that we could see God do something even more amazing in our midst. I just remember Phil and Lucinda taking on the youth ministry. It was all like a really big deal. Like Phil and Lucinda were taking on the youth ministry. We were just so excited. We could not believe the opportunity that had come our way. And just wanted to build an incredible army of young people who would change the face of the earth. And I never left youth ministry. I was sent from it. I want you to know that. <laughs> so whenever I go to youth now, I cry at it because it's still in there. It's awesome. The youth group I came from was like four people, so it was like it was like the biggest change to go from like four people to like you know hundreds of people. I've been in the church basically my whole life. So I, as soon as I was 
old enough, I wanted to be in the youth ministry. I kind of started going to youth like when I was about a year too young to go, just because I wanted to be one of the big kids. I don't know if it was Phil or Matt, you know, like one of those guys came and picked me up and felt like you're just going to love, you know, youth. It's just going to be great. It was cool though. It was, it was small and it was kind of family, I guess. I don't know. Like it's just one of those things where you immediately feel at home. You know, all the young people are really pumped to be there and you know seeking God really hard out. I was just like these people are just absolutely crazy you know like it's weird that people like God and that they're, they're kind of normal kind of people. Like you never knew what was going to happen but I kind of think like our youth leaders didn't know what was going to happen either they're just kind of like everyone would get together and it was just anything could happen and, and probably did. Well one thing we really said was youth group cannot be boring. I mean, we just had to be committed to making youth group the most fun place to be. Christians don't have to be boring! We are exciting people! Get out there! <laughs> it was always fun. Even, even when it was small, even when everything went wrong, just, I mean, look at Phil's personality. You know, it was always fun, even when it went tragically wrong. In fact, that was often why it was fun. It was always about making youth just the best it could be. We wanted it to be large, we wanted it to be fun, we wanted it to have such a sense of God. I remember like before youth all day just crying out to God for the night, you know, like just and being so hungry but just scared as anything that it wouldn't work. It was really exciting and really scary kind of times because we literally sit around after a youth night and we go, man, what can we do next week to make sure kids are going to come back? There was a real excitement and an, and an expectancy and to be part of the youth ministry was just a really, it was just fun. And we really got passionate, not just about doing a great youth ministry, but about equipping young people to reach their friends. Like most youth ministries in the early days, the idea of getting into schools was to get the youth pastors and the youth leaders out there to reach kids. And But as time went by, we started to realise that we didn't need to get into schools in a sense if our students are already in the schools. Well, for me to go into a high school, there is a level of effectiveness in uh, the way I can relate to young people. But when a young person, a student in a high school, understands that they can be a missionary in that high school, I'll tell you what, they can have more impact in that school than I ever could. Pretty much like we decided that what we had here at, at Wildlife and at United, like we wanted to take it to our schools, we wanted to see young kids' lives changed. And so we, with me and a group of guys and girls from my school, we just decided that we we're going to put something on for the students that they'd love and also that could change their lives and change our school. We started off with about 10 of us and by the end of the year we had at least 70 people coming along and, and it really changed the school and not just when I was there but also like the lunchtime group's still going and, and seeing it grow and just keep moving forward and it's just had an awesome impact. Well, as things were continuing to grow with the high school youth ministry, we had to keep looking for new venues. And I remember we went from one place into this old hairdressing salon that no one wanted to lease. We did a big renovation on it. Well, we thought it was big. We painted every wall a different color. We thought that was pretty cool. Uh, maybe it was back in the 90s. And uh, after we kind of outgrew that, we then moved upstairs. And, and we met in what was the... Um the preschool, the toddler's room. The whole group fitted in the little children's crash room with hand paintings on the wall. It's like the most uncool room to run youth ministry in. And then we moved into the rock climbing gym and I tell you, it was so much fun. There's obviously all the ropes and things to climb on and we used to get guest speakers and we'd kind of put them on a rope from a viewing platform and swing them in and sometimes they'd land in the right spot, sometimes they didn't, but we prayed that God would look after them. We wanted young people to see that God was exciting and, and it was fresh and other ways of doing it. We'd always throw a video in there or a song or something to really mix it up. In the early days we made some really key decisions about things that would be non-negotiable. Having a, a heart for praise and worship isn't something that started when we started putting out albums. It, before we ever had United Band, I remember the guys would get together and they'd, uh, they'd do a song every week, we'd tell them we need a song. Uh, but there came a point where they're only really young and only just learning, and they're agile and Marty and, and, and Jizzy and all that. And the thing was, they only knew really three songs. So what happened was, no matter what we were preaching on, we could only pick one of those three songs from the play. And it's true, we did have like our three or four songs that we knew perfectly and the rest we really didn't know and we would recycle the same songs over and over again each week. We were all so young man. I can't even remember how young we were, we were like, I don't know, 16 and Mikey was probably like 11. Um, 
probably wasn't even old enough to get into the youth group, but we let him in because he was good at guitar or something. It's a funny thing with praise and worship because you go through this journey of starting out and nobody can really play properly and then you get to this place where you hopefully get a little bit better and it's got structure and it sounds better but then there's an amazing place you can get to where you drop all of that and it's free and that's what that summer camp was. Summer camp 98, it was like a turning point I think for our youth group. It was maybe something that spiritually we were build, building up to for a while. Well, Delirious had just released an album called Live and in the Can and I love that album. I, I listened to it and something about it got in my spirit. And I started just playing it over and over again and then I played it to our youth team and, and, and I thought, we've got to do some of these songs and I started playing it to some of our young musicians. We're doing rehearsals for summer camp. Phil Dooley said, you know, this is great being delirious, you know, you've got to hear some of this stuff. But I said to the guys, I said, guys, there's three songs I really want you to learn for this night at summer camp. And uh, they were, I found Jesus, uh, did you feel the mountains tremble? And I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I actually remember coming out of having dinner and we were playing music that night. I just saw all these kids everywhere, like, they're just praying, you know, in groups. We went to this prayer meeting and, like, literally when you walked into this tent, it was like, man, the presence of God was just, just right, like, just massive. It was intense. The building was just crammed with people. A tiniest little stage and no air conditioning and it was like 40 degrees outside. And the prayer meeting probably meant to go for like 15 minutes, half an hour. Um, you know, before we knew it, it was like the prayer meeting had been going for like an hour and a half and then uh, Phil's like, okay, let's just get the band up and so let's just kind of start worshipping. And... Well, the, the, the band started playing these songs and, and it was a young band. I mean, there were high school students there. There was a couple of guys who were probably just out of high school, but they were all young and they were just hungry for God. And they started playing these songs, and I want to tell you, the place just went crazy. I've never been in such an environment where the whole place is physically, tangibly experiencing the presence of God and running with it, you know? Like, not just, oh, I'm, this is foreign to me, but, like, this is so what I was created for, you know? And just seeing, like, the whole crowd just full-on dancing and praising God and, like, kids jumping so high and, like, yelling and, like, just being so excited like about God. I really don't know how to describe it. Um, it was just amazing and I do, I get goosebumps when I think about it now because God just touched people in such a powerful and real way. God did something in that place and, and like young kids were prophesying and there were just these amazing moments where like the band just went off and just started playing prophetically. Like we'd be playing and like we'd be looking around at each other just going, this is amazing, you know, like we, we can't believe this. Something was really happening in God and that is definitely a pivot point, like where like God really invaded our youth ministries. I'd probably describe it as a very divine move of God, nothing we could have orchestrated or conjured up, but the Spirit of God just came and touched not just the worship band and the guys leading, but the whole camp. We came back from summer camp and one of the things that we'd been saying to our youth, and we say this all the time now, let's not leave this at camp what the Spirit of God is doing in us and through us. Let's bring it back to our church. Let's bring it back to our homes. Let's live this out. And uh, literally young people caught that. And so we came to church and I want to tell you something hit the church. Because youth has never been separate to the church. Youth, the youth ministry of Hillsong Church from day one has been integral, integral part of the church. Like we took over Sundays with church, like we knew that we were part of our church and we weren't just sort of the next generation, we were a vital part of this generation. When the young people come back from summer camp, they just get passionate about God, the praise and the worship and the, the, the preaching and the teaching they receive, it just switches young people on and it has a big impact. I mean, you can feel the atmosphere of the services lift like that. 170 kids dancing and praising God and worshipping God and they didn't care what anyone else was doing, you know? They, they didn't care what anyone else thought about them. They were just getting into God and praising God. And you know what? Tonight these guys are going to play this song. And uh, 
I just pray that you guys would be able to just be liberated and released like we were to praise God. Come on, everybody, let's sing this. Oh, open up the doors and let the music play. Everybody. Sunday night at church, it was just amazing. And the song, Did You Feel the Mountains Tremble, literally became an anthem, like an anthem of freedom. We came home and... Um, just felt as a youth ministry not to go into separate age group programs and just keep everyone together. Just for, I, I think it was a few, maybe four to six months of that. And this is where the term United came out of. We uh, wanted to bring all of our youth ministry together, the different age groups, and we were calling them kind of combined nights, but we thought, hey, United, that's what we're all about. You know, we're united in faith, we're united in our love for God, and we're united in our desire to make a difference. Welcome to the first of our United Nights. These are United Nights where Powerhouse and Wildlife is combining. We're all together. We call these nights the United Nights because we believe that when we're united, God does something powerful. And it was also a great time of growth. It wasn't just um, worship, praise and worship. It was a real time of young people bringing their friends and getting passionate about their schools and really seeing God move in a way that we had never experienced before as a youth ministry. And there was a real momentum, people getting saved and just crazy times. And the songs were coming. It was during that period that, like, I think God really birthed something within us to be writing songs. And, uh, you know, in that time Reuben wrote, like, My Redeemer Lives and Eagle's Wings, Hear Our Praises, Hallelujah, all those songs were like, written in that period of time and then Marty started writing songs, some of the other young guys and myself. I think it just made a generation of young people rise up. I think everyone was so excited because the songs that the guys started writing were being birthed out of their experiences in God, out of this this movement, this momentum of the Spirit of God moving and it created this ownership. There's new songs, fresh sounds, a, a fresh way to worship. Darlene came up to us and just went, we should like do a recording. Um, we should do like a youth album. Basically we, we'd been through this period where like all the young guys were writing all these songs and uh, and it just, it was like, hey, we got all these songs, like what are we going to do? And we we played with the idea of doing a youth album for a long time. And then we just started along that process, which has been an amazing process, which kind of led to, there was the first one that we did in about a week. And, and then we kind of went from there into um, doing every day. There's a responsibility for us to be bringing a new song. And, and, and I know that the guys, you know, they don't write songs for albums. And, and you know, it is planned that we do an album every year, but and we'll do that as long as the songs keep coming and as long as we feel there's a need for them. But there's something about a new song when you bring it that just brings something fresh. It, it's just fantastic how the style of worship has evolved in this, and, and young people being able to write their songs their way and, and songs that express what God's doing in their life and what God is doing in their youth ministry. The album really is just capturing the heartbeat of young people and their passion for God. And, uh, and that's our desire, is to continue to see young people grow and develop in their desire to live for Jesus and to really change their world. I'd like to think that we do albums for the same reason maybe, you know, Delirious all, all those years ago had Live and In The Can. That was the album that at summer camp really affected us, you know, that as, as young people, you know, we, we caught their spirit and what they were, how they related to God and basically we just, like, we play those songs, man, like so many times. And I think that the whole point of albums is not so that we've got, you know, like 12 cool new songs to sing, but I think the point of albums is just you know, so that people will have something, you know, that helps bring them close to God, you know. People are connecting with the albums all around the place and, and the songs are, are connecting with people, you know, in, in places that you would never dream of, of ever going to, let alone, you know, like your, your music going there. Young people, uh, 
the sound of a youth generation going out in the praise and the worship, and you can take that out and people can see it modelled in their own nations or in their own cities, I just think it's a really powerful thing. This is what we do and we just want to show you how we do it and maybe you'll have some ideas for your youth ministry or maybe you'll pick up something from it or God will birth something in you during that time that you'll be able to take back to your youth ministry and start to see your community change just like we're seeing ours change. So the first thought for us was just to praise God and to worship God and, and to see like our youth group get changed, you know, to see them more passionate for God, to see young people in our community get saved and, and that's all our heart's ever been. It's, it's truly just been about our youth ministry, you know, we've done it week in, week out, some of us for like 10 years. This isn't just a team that's thrown together from here, there and everywhere. This, is, this encourages me because this is our youth ministry and we, we do this kind of thing every week. This is no different from, what, from how we serve God day to day. And, and, I'm, and I'm blessed to have friends and a team like you guys, and I know Joel and Marnie and everyone, like, this is a full-on blessing of being like this. A lot of the guys go on tour and that sort of thing and represent us, which is really cool, but it's great that we can just get together on a Friday night and that it has a lot bigger impact than what we could have ever imagined. We seriously just do what, what I've been doing every Friday night and then although you might be getting it's on the other side of the world whether it's in America or Canada or in Europe somewhere or Asia and you just you shut your eyes and you're just worshipping God with everything and you open your eyes but there's like a whole different culture out there but they're all hands raised screaming out so passionate for God and it is just like it's just so amazing that like God's grace is upon us to do what we're doing. I think it's important to you know to realize because United is not a band or an album and it's not a label or a brand like United is a spirit of a local church youth ministry that always was and always will be just about reaching young people to Christ. How fantastic now that wow we're in a place where you know there's so much resource so much talent that songs just sort of roll out of the youth ministry but it was never about that and it isn't about that still knowing how to praise God, knowing how to worship God when they're at youth and when they're at church, but also when they're at home, is like part of our DNA. When I started getting involved, I was probably about 13 or 14 or maybe, I don't know, something around then. Um, it, it was, it was, you know, we'd just get together during the week and be like, okay, how are we going to make this Friday night amazing? And it's funny because like, all these years later, you know, everything's much bigger and, and it feels like there's this big machine, but in reality, during the week, it's exactly the same. There's just all these kind of just people just who are willing and, um, and who love it, just getting together and going, okay, how can we make this Friday night like the best possible? How can we best kind of, you know, connect young people to God? And I guess in a lot of ways, um, not much has changed. It's gotten so much bigger, but when it all comes down to it, it's still about youth leaders and young people. It's about the connect groups and discipling people and impacting schools. It's just that we now can do it on a bigger scale than we ever imagined. We want to be a youth ministry that, that brings the goodness of God into the lives of people wherever they are and shows them the power of the church. And everything we do is about God and about people, about loving God and having an intimate relationship with Jesus. We've got two campuses, we've got junior high, senior high, young adults ministries happening, so six different programs plus extension services happening. And It's always evolving and just like, okay, how are we going to do it now? You know, this is where we're at. What are we going to do? All right, this is who we've got. Everyone, what, what can you offer? How can we make this work? Because I think people love to be in a, an environment where they feel like they can bring something and feel like they can contribute, whether it's like, you know, sit out chairs or, or like singing or, you know, playing an instrument or just, you know, or praying for someone, you know, like people love to contribute and people love to bring something. And I think that's what makes it tick and, and what makes it great. And I love that that hasn't changed in the midst of all the other stuff that's happening. I think the cool thing for us is that like, this is our lives. Like, it's not just a... Um, uh, an event that we go to, but it's like our week in, week out lives. Well, I suppose when I think about the future, I just have a desire and an understanding that if we can continue to stay, um, stay right before God and just listen to His voice, that who knows where God can take what we're about. I think, and I really mean this, I really think if our youth ministry that was passionate but really ordinary, <laughs> full of just real people, can pursue God with all their heart, have a dream, and see so far God do some amazing things, and it's still the best ahead, then I think 
And any youth ministry can do this. I'd just like to see United keep going forwards. And whatever that means, I don't think that we have to put any limitations on what God can do. As big as we can dream, I think that we can accomplish, you know, as long as we never lose our eyes on, on the main goal. And that's, you know, is presenting the message of Jesus and the gospel to all men. Um, I love what Jesus said. He said, I'm going to go and be with my Father, but I'm going to leave the Holy Spirit here with you and you will therefore do greater works than I have done. And I think the heart of God is that all the generations will do greater than the ones that have gone before. I'm a leader of like some young guys in the youth and I actually place more importance on, on that than on a lot of things in my life, you know, on seeing them flourish and on seeing them be amazing people, you know, as they get older and as the, their friends come to church and praying with them and prophesying over them and, you know, give them a slap every now and then. United to me is like this, it's just this evolving thing, you know, it's this evolving understanding of what God is to young people and what God can do in young people. And I would, I would hope that like wherever United heads in the next, you know, five, ten years, that the heart of it would still be like, you know, what we're just people serving in our local church, being faithful, and we just love God, and we just place a lot of value on, on like, on, on kids, like getting to know their Creator through worshiping, getting to know, like, getting to know their God through praise and jumping up and down and being crazy, but not just, not just hype, but like something real. We're, we're all about just seeing young people kind of fulfill their potential and like use whatever they've got, whatever creativity they have, or whatever giftings they have, or whatever to kind of just to love God more and to and to reach more people and you know and and as long as we stay focused on on the thing that we're we're focused on which is is reaching young people connecting them to God I think I think there's no end to what God can do with that because because he loves that heart that's just like hey I'll do whatever there'll always be a new song as long as people are getting saved and as long as people are meeting with Jesus and the Holy Spirit's moving I think the new song will stop when it becomes about the new song. And, um, but it's sure not what we're doing. I think our message is the gospel helping our community. And um, I think we've only just started. It's amazing.